say M? Yeah? Absolutely it is. Listen, and you folks remind me of our son Jim, who had a 6.30 zero period class in high school. We lived not too far from the, from the school, and he could get up at like 6.15 and still make it to school by 6.30. I do not want to know what, what it looked like on the road between our house and there, but he would do it. You guys are great showing up. Thank you so much. We start week two this week. Uh, the focus this week, I want to get you into this thought. The focus this week is listening. Are you a good listener? Do you like to talk rather than listen? Well, maybe the Lord has something to say to us as we gather. We're so glad that you are gathering. And those of you who are at home watching us this morning, um, so I want to pray for us, then we're going to enjoy some music and have a little teaching and time of prayer. Let's, let's pray. Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you that we have the privilege, the high honor of being in your presence even now. What a joy it is. Thank you. Would you, would you please fill us with your spirit this morning? Would you lead us as we come and bow before you in prayer today? that you might be glorified in all we do. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and stand up. If you're like me, you hit that snooze button a couple of extra times this morning. So I made sure I picked a good, slow song to put us back to sleep. No, I got some fast music. We're going to wake up. It's going to be fun. Let's lift our voices in praise and worship this morning. Sing it, oh precious. Sing it, oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain, no. I wash, I wash, I'm drenched in love. Oh, so. By the blood of the Lamb, I'm not a slave to what once held me down. How beautiful that cleansing flood. I washed, I washed, I'm drenched in love. Come and sing, oh precious. Come and sing, oh precious. Forevermore, my name's been carved 
upon your heart. No, not death, no, not hell could ever rip us apart. Oh, and sing it, oh, precious. Sing it, oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as Ah, that ought to get us moving. Thank you, guys. So an elderly man named Robert, he was in a, this terrible situation. He and a 51-year-old pilot friend of his had decided to fly from Indianapolis to Muncie, Indiana. And as they were flying, the pilot, the 51-year-old, stumped over, heart attack, and died. 81-year-old Robert was panicked as the plane began to nosedive. And so he, he grabbed the controls and put on the headset and just began to cry out for help because he had absolutely no idea what to do. Two pilots heard this distress call and, and they immediately started giving him instructions. And there was an airport called Mount, at Mount Comfort. It was the closest one. And so Robert, who had never flown a plane before, had any experience with this, listened very closely to every word as they gave him a steady stream of instructions on how to climb and land the plane. The pilots did something else, though. They decided to circle with him three times around the runway to make sure that he was comfortable enough to give it a try. And so uh, he began to descend, was ready to lane, land the plane, and the emergency vehicles were there as they should be, expecting what most of us would expect for this approaching disaster. Witnesses saw the plane's nose nudge the center line and bounce a few times before the tail came down and hit the ground. The plane landed, and to everyone's surprise, 81-year-old Robert was not injured at all. Robert had listened so carefully and followed so closely the instructions of those pilots because his life depended on it. I, uh, in the uh, book of 1 Samuel, we know the story. Chapter 3, where Samuel is in the, in the temple and he's working with Eli. And you remember, remember the story? And it tells us in chapter 3 there that the, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. It says that now in those days, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. You remember the story? Levi goes in, lays down, and he hears a voice and someone calling his name, and he thought it was... He thought it was Eli. Samuel went in and laid down, and he thought it was Eli calling him. And, and then for the third time when he came in and says, what is it? What do you want? Uh, and Samuel, uh, Eli tells Samuel, says, that's not me calling you. Go back. And when you hear it the third time, you remember what he said to him to say? Speak, Lord, for what? Your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And I ask you as we start, I said, are you, are you a talker or are you a listener? Because here's what we do know. God's speaking. Now, he's speaking now. I mean, if you can't sense that God is, is speaking to us as a church, to us as a country, to, to you as individuals, then I, I wonder if we're listening. I wonder if we're listening. God speaks. He has a voice. He spoke the universe into existence. 
He said, let there be light, and there was light. He speaks. He spoke in the Garden of Eden. He spoke to Abraham and Moses and Joshua and Elijah and David and on and on and on. He spoke the word to the writers in the Bible. He spoke over his son when he was here. This is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him, God says of his son. And in Isaiah, we're told in verse 30 in Isaiah, it says this, uh, chapter 30, verse 21 says this, if you, wander, if you wander off the road to the right or the left, you will hear his voice, God's voice behind you saying, here is the road, follow it. The, the problem isn't that God doesn't speak. The problem for most of us is that we don't listen. God knew that. He spoke about that in Job. It says, for God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. And in the psalmist, we, we, in the psalm, psalm 81, we see this one. But my people Israel, you refuse to listen and, and you have, would have nothing to do with me. So I left you, I let you be stubborn and keep on following your own advice. My people listen, my people Israel, if you would only if only you would listen and do as I say, I, the Lord, would quickly defeat your enemies with my mighty power. And then Jeremiah 7, verse 24 says this, but my people would not listen to me. They kept doing whatever they wanted, following the stubborn desires of their evil hearts. They went backward instead of forward. That's what happens when we don't listen to the Lord. And how might our lives be transformed if we, like Robert, the 81-year-old in the airplane, listened to the instructions of God as though our life depended on it? What difference might it make for us? When we do listen, God's made all kinds of promises. Psalm 85, verse 8 says this, I listened, I listened carefully to what the Lord, what the what God the Lord is saying for he speaks peace to his faithful people and so how how might we this week intently focus on listening how might we do that you know the only way we can listen is to stop talking isn't it true you know people that you or around sometimes, and they just like to talk, 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 talk. And you try, you, what, what is the saying? I can't get a word in. Isn't it true? In order to listen, I, I have to stop talking. Be still, the Bible tells us, and know that I am God. We have to drown out the noise, the distractions, the disruptions. Dane did a great job this past Saturday of teaching us that when our minds are prone to wander, how we can bring them back. But we have, to, we have to block out the distractions around us too so that we can listen and listen. We have to put ourselves in a place where we can hear him. And, and then here's, here's the third one. We need to ask him to speak to us. We, we need to say, Lord, would you speak to me whatever it is that I need to know today? Maybe there's one word that'll come to your mind and you'll hear it over and over again. Maybe it's uh, something, as Dane said on Saturday, that the Lord is challenging us to address in our lives and it just keeps coming up. But we have to ask him to speak and he'll speak. So ask him today. I remember uh, when I was in seminary, one of the things they taught us was uh, you know, to spend some time just meditating over Scripture and just to sit quietly and listen. And I'm not really good at that, if you want to know the truth, just because I'm always, like many of you, I'm always thinking, I'm always, it's hard to stop talking in my head. And so I sat down, and, I, and I, I'm, I've set aside time. I can remember where I was sitting, and I was just focusing on, on God and I would get distracted, and I'll tell you what would take me back. I'd learned this, that if you go back to Scripture and just quote some Scripture in your mind, that'll bring you back into this moment with God, and I would do that. 
and sat there for the longest time and I was begging God to speak. <clears throat> and I, I didn't hear anything and I didn't hear anything and I didn't hear anything. And then finally, finally, you know what I heard? The simplest thing. I love you, Jimmy. I love you. And I thought, I, I, I knew that, but I heard it. I heard it. I love you. And, and, and I don't know, it just did something for me. It filled me with peace. It filled me with God's, I don't know, just his presence in a way I had not experienced it before. And, and the, the, the last thing I want to tell you is we need to tune our ears to his voice. We, we need to learn his voice. And, and the way we do that is, is that we we, we recognize that he often speaks in a still, small voice, like he did to Elijah in the cave when he said and whispered to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Often he's, he's guiding us when we don't even realize it. But we must listen to these quiet thoughts and ask, Lord, are you, is, is this you? Are you speaking to me? Then make it clear. Help me to hear it. Give me the ears. I need to learn to recognize his voice, and his voice is always his voice always lines up with scripture. Always. I, I need to know his will so I can know his voice, because his voice is always going to be in accordance with his will. And so I've got to I gotta stop talking. I've got to drown out the noise. I've got to ask him to speak to me, and I've got to tune my ears to know it's his voice Henry and Richard Blackaby have a, a quote that I like it, it, the quote says this it says take a moment to consider the awesome reality that God who spoke and created the universe is now speaking to you if Jesus could speak and raise the dead calm a storm cast out demons and cure the incurable then what effect might a word from him have upon your life today and so debbie and i were uh, we listened to music um, and uh, we were listening to a new song by carrie Job, if you know her um, christian artist and and she sang this beautiful song called the blessing that i've shared before but there's a new one she's got out called favorite place favorite place you ought to listen to it i want to read you some of the words the lyrics from her song favorite place I, I don't want to leave this moment i don't want to miss one thing is there anything you want to tell me i hang on every word you say i'm longing for a fresh encounter a wonder that I can't explain. Is there anything you want to show me? Your presence is my favorite place. I don't want to leave this moment. I don't want to miss one thing. And so I'm going to give you some time now to uh, have time just to listen to God this morning. And I, I want to start us with a prayer, and then you, you just listen this morning to what he has for you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that you desire to speak to us every day. You desire to guide us in spirit and in truth to obey your word and enjoy this abundant life that we've heard about. Thank you that you call us your friend and that we may come boldly to the throne of grace to find help anytime we need it. You've told us in the Bible that when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. So we draw near to you today. We seek your face. We want to know you more, hear you more, and obey you more. 
We are in this place right now to hear you speak. Help us to listen for your voice and your voice alone. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening.
So yesterday after the uh, worship service, Kathy and I were talking about our dads. And uh, one of the things that I told her that was uh, true in my life with my dad towards the end of his, his life, I would call him and talk to him. He was in Dublin and most of that time I was in Macon. And uh, we would have a conversation. And then you'd get to this point where the, he, he would just sit there on the phone and he wouldn't say anything. And, and I would tell Debbie, I said, you know, this is the strangest thing because he's, he's, he's on the other end, but I'm like waiting, you know, because I'm busy. I got stuff I got to do, right? And he's just sitting there and he's not saying anything. And I'm like, first I, I began to think, is he okay? And this would happen over and over. And, and then what I finally realized was that he didn't need words. He just wanted to be connected with me on the phone. And, and I think I get what Carrie Job is saying about her favorite place, that about just being in your presence, Lord. Just, I, I don't want to miss a thing, and I don't want to leave this place. I want to stay right there in that connection with you. And sometimes there are words, and sometimes there are not, just to be connected with you. So this week, listen, listen. <laughs> I say that often, don't I? We're learning to listen. And so our prayer is, Lord, teach me to, teach me to listen. Teach me to listen. Let, let's pray if we could. Father, thank you so very much. You're such a good God. And, and it's your heart's desire to connect with us j just like I would connect with my father. And sometimes, sometimes we would talk about a whole lot of things and then sometimes it would just be silence and we were just together. And that's your heart with every single person in this room, every single person who's watching. It's your heart that we would just connect with you. We've been praying this past week that you would teach us to, to learn how to pray, to really learn how to pray. And we believe you're answering that prayer for us, God, because we're, we're in a deeper place than we were when we started, a deeper place with you. But would you this week, God, would you teach us how to listen? How to, how to tune into your voice? Because it is that our life depends on you and the instructions and the words that you have for us. So would you teach us to listen this week? God, if only our, our leaders would listen if only our country, if only the world would turn again to you and listen solely to your voice to lead us, then we would be the people that you meant us to be from the beginning. People who search for you and find you and listen to you and, and do what you say. So God, would you, would you help our country, would you help our leaders of our country in all levels, to listen, to learn how to listen to your voice? W would you have people on both sides of the aisle, uh, on different places in theology and different places around the world and how they feel about different issues, would you have them all, all of us, listen to your voice? If we would only listen, what might we hear? What might we discover about you? And what might we discover about ourselves? Maybe we'll hear things like, you've been listening too much to your own heart or to your own head. Or you've been listening too much to others around you. Or, or maybe we'll hear things like, the, the voice that you're listening to is not my voice. Tune to my voice. Maybe we would hear you say, that's my son, that's my daughter, and I'm proud of you. You're my beloved, and I love you. So this week, God, speak to us. Teach us to listen, not just to hear the words, 
but to know the one who speaks them and to know where they're coming from and to know that every single word we hear you speak is for our good because you love us so. Teach us to listen this week. Thank you, God, that we've had this time in your presence this morning. The beauty of it is that when we leave here, you're still with us. And so send us out, God, even in the midst of all the noise that we'll see today and hear today, would you help us to listen to you even today and every day? This is our prayer, Lord. Teach us to listen. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, grab some coffee on the way out. Listen, tomorrow we have a special gift for you, so you don't want to miss tomorrow. Uh, we'll see you then. Thank you.